the absence of questions, then we can start with the session. Welcome everyone to another session where we do revision. So today I just want us to concentrate on hypothesis as well. So we might take the whole two hours to do hypothesis and tomorrow we can do the last two sections that are left, which will be your chi-squared and the regression where we use the template. Let me share my entire screen. So if you go to can. We still use question ex, um, assignment for questions. <clears throat> so let's first describe hypothesis testing so that then it can we can um uh um remind ourselves of the of the concepts that we want or we need to learn in order for us to answer the question relating to hypothesis testing. So in terms of hypothesis testing, like with chi-square, there are three sections that you need to remind yourself of. Right? It's hypothesis testing for the mean when the population standard deviation is known. And for the mean when the population standard deviation is unknown. Therefore, it means they have given you the sample standard deviation and for the proportion. And for the proportion. With, with all hypothesis testing, there are several things that you need to always remember. Remember that you need to remember the six steps of hypothesis testing, where step number one is to state your null hypothesis and your alternative hypothesis. There's always two things that you need to remember at the beginning to state your null hypothesis and your alternative hypothesis. And that also helps in terms of determining what you need to do with the rest of the statement. How are you going to make a decision? How are you going to find the critical values? How, um, how are you going to uh, find the p-value as well? It has so many things bearing on that. So the second step that you also need to remember is to state whatever you are given in terms of your alpha. So you need to state what alpha value you are given because it's also going to help you in determining your critical value, your p-value, how you make a decision, and so on. Your alpha value, your sample size, if give it, and sometimes you need to determine whether you are given the population, standard deviation, or you are given the proportion. And that is very important because by identifying these things as early as possible will guide you in terms of whether do you need to use the hypothesis for the mean or do you need to use the hypothesis for the proportion. And based on that, it will also help in terms of determining the formulas that you are going to be using. Step number three, you need to find the critical value. Remember with the critical value as well, depending on whether the population standard deviation is given or whether you're using the proportion or you're doing a one-tail test or a two-tail test, you need to be able to determine uh, where you will locate your critical values. So those things are very important, whether you're going to be using the T-tail test or you go, oh, sorry, the T-table or whether you're going to use the Z-table whether you need to divide your alpha by two or not, those are very important. Step number four, you need to 
uh, actually there is another step that I missed earlier on before step number number two is the step number three should be state the test statistic that you're going to be using. So whether you're using test statistics Test statistic, whether you're going to be using the Z or the T. And then step number four, you will find the critical value based on that, uh, whether you're using a Z test statistic or a T test statistic. And step number five, it is when you need to calculate your test statistic. Calculate your test statistics. And this your test statistic and this is based on whether which is that value you are calculating and step number six is to make make a decision and conclude and conclude so those are the three the six steps that you need to remember and know you must also bear in mind that in the exam the options can be the six steps, and I haven't even touched on the p-value as well. So those are the six steps that you're going to use if you are using the critical value. If you are using the z-value, there are also those similar steps, step number one up until step number three. When you get to step number three, you come to step number four and calculate the test statistics, and then you find the p-value and that we will look at it as we go on with examples. So how do you state your null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis? You state your null hypothesis on the basis that your null hypothesis always contains an equal sign. So with your null hypothesis, there is always an equal sign. So it can either be uh, I'm, I'm just going to use this slide here on this side. It can either be equal, sorry, your null hypothesis will be equal or less than or equal or greater than or equal. Or it can just be equal because in your null hypothesis, there is always an equal sign. Your alternative does not have an equal sign, and your alternative will be not equal, greater than, or less than. That's how you will state your alternative. So this will be your null hypothesis, how you state your null hypothesis, and this will be how you state your alternative. And also remember that your hypothesis state statement, we always use the Parameter. Parameter. Therefore, it means you're going to use the mean or you're going to use the proportion. That is how you state your null hypothesis. So if it says the null hypothesis, you will state it and say the mean is equals to 100 or the mean or your alternative, it will say the mean is not equals to 100. You cannot use X bar. You cannot use the sample statistics when you state your null hypothesis. Those are very important things to remember. So when you state your null hypothesis and your alternative hypothesis, it also comes with different things. It tells you what type of a test you are doing. So if it is a not equal, therefore it means you are doing a two, a two tail, a two tail test. If your alternative, remember only your alternative statement is the one that we're going to be using. So in your alternative, if it says less than or greater than or less than this, it means you're doing a one tail a one tail test. It is very, very important to remember that, that in your alternative hypothesis, if it says greater than or it says less than, that's how you will find your region of rejection 
and how you will find your critical values and how you're going to make a decision. OK. So when you do hypothesis testing for the population, let's assume that we do it for a one tail test. So when we do for the one tail test, I'm just going to repeat all this on this side. So, so for a one tail test, therefore it means there are two things to remember here. So it's either your alternative is less than or your alternative is greater than. So if we do for a one tail test, you go into state whether you have your alpha value of um, 0, 0.05 or 0, 0.10 or whatever the alpha value they have given you. You go into state that you go, you're doing a Z test because these are Z tests. You go into state the critical value. So now when you go find the critical value for a one tail test, regardless of which side it is, so you will find your critical value by using Z alpha. That is where you will find your critical value. If you are doing a two tail, a two tail test, which means there is a not equal, you will also find all these other things that you needed to find because we're doing for population standard deviation where it's known, it is a Z test. For a two tail test, you're going to find your critical value by using Z alpha over two, right? So when you calculate your Z test statistic for the Z, it, you just use your Z stat, which is your normal Z score value uh, calculation from the sampling distribution, which will be your sample mean minus your population mean divided by the population standard deviation over the square root of N. And that's how you will find the test statistic you're going to use your test statistic and the critical value. So depending on your test, right? So let's assume that the first one that we're going to use is for the less than. In order for you to find the, to make a decision for the less than, you're going to draw a normal distribution curve that looks like this. And because it's a less than, therefore it means your region of rejection will be on this side, on the negative side. So you're going to have your negative Z alpha there. If it is greater than, let's say your alternative was a greater than, then your region of rejection will be your Z alpha. If it's a two tail, then your region of rejection will be on both sides. It will be on the Z alpha divided by two on the negative side and on the positive Z alpha over two. That's how you will find and make a decision. So if your Z that statistic falls in the white area, you do not reject. If it falls in the red area for a less than, you reject. If it's greater than, if it falls in the red area, shaded area, you reject. If it falls in the white area, you do not reject. For a two tail, when it is not equal, if it falls in either side, the shaded area, you reject. If it falls in the not shaded area, you do not reject. And that's how you will find the, um, or you will make a decision based on the information that you have. Okay, just want to give me space so I can have enough space on here. Okay, so let's also look at when the population standard deviation is unknown, therefore it means they have given you a sample standard deviation. 
for a one tail test when it's less than and for a one tail test when it's greater than you also going to follow the same format and when it is not equal for a two tail test so yeah you're going to state your degrees of freedom you're going to find your degrees of freedom which is n minus one because it's going to help us because if I've already found out what my n is, I can calculate my degrees of freedom. I'm going to test the hypothesis and say, oh, my test statistic here will be a t test or t test statistic. That will be step number three. Step number four, finding the critical value for a one tail test, it will be t alpha and the degrees of freedom and for a two tail for a one tail test so for both of them it will be t alpha and the degrees of freedom you would have already calculated what the degrees of freedom is for a a two tail test it will be t alpha over two and the degrees of freedom right so that's how you will find your critical value to, and then you will calculate your test statistic, which is T stat, which is the sample mean minus the population mean divided by the standard error. Here, your standard error will be for the sample. It will be S divided by the square root of N, which is almost similar to what we calculate. Making the decision, you're going to look at the side. In your alternative hypothesis, if the sign is less than, then you're going to follow the same. Your origin of rejection will be on the minus T alpha and the degrees of freedom. Sorry, my pen is spitting out. It will be T alpha and the degrees of freedom. If it falls on the shaded area on the negative side, then you, if it falls on the left hand side, then you 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 reject your uh, null hypothesis. If it's on the greater than side, you also do the same. You're going to determine what your t alpha and the degrees of freedom is, and if it's a two tail, you're going to find on both sides. Nothing changes. It's still going to be on the T alpha over two and the degrees of freedom and on the positive T alpha on over two and the degrees of freedom. So you're going to make a decision based on the region of rejection, based on whether you're doing a one tail test or a two tail test. Now, when it comes to the proportion, similar thing happens you're going to do for one tail whether it's on the left hand side or the right hand side lower side upper side or when it is not equal and when it is a one tail test because this is z so the only thing you're going to find is alpha and the n and the proportion and remember for the proportion, if they didn't give you uh, the things that you're going to state there, if they didn't give you the sample proportion, you're going to find your sample proportion by using observation satisfying the outcomes of the sample divided by the sample size. And that will give you the sample proportion. You will define what your level of significance is and so on. And here you're going to state number three, you're going to say you are doing a Z test because for the proportion, it's also a Z test. Also, similarly to what we did previously, when it's one tail, whether it's on the left or on the right, we use Z alpha. And for two tail, you will use Z alpha over two. And it means you're going to have two regions of rejection. And your Z test will be calculated using the proportions, which is the sample proportion minus the population proportion 
divide by the standard error, which is the square root of the population proportion, one minus the population proportion, divide by n. And that will be the Z test that you use for the proportion. And the same story happens for a one tail. If it's less than, it will be on one side. If it's greater than, it will be on the greater than side. If it's a two tail, you will have two regions of rejection. So it will still remain the same. Negative alpha, Z alpha, positive Z alpha, and negative Z alpha divided by two, and positive Z alpha divided by two on the other side. And that is if you're using the critical value to make a decision. What happens when you use a p-value? This is only applicable when you only doing a z-test. So for the z-test, any test hypothesis test that you do and you are using a z-test, so therefore it means for the mean and for the proportion, when the population standard deviation is known for the mean, and for the proportion, you're going to be using the, the p-value to make a decision. How then do you make a decision based on the p-value? So there are three scenarios that can happen, especially when you are using the p-value. Now, we will start with the one tail when it is less than. So you will do. The first step, you state your null hypothesis and your alternative the same way as we stated. You will state what you are given, alpha, your n, your standard deviation, your pi, or um, your sample proportion, whatever you are given there. That's step number two. Step number three, you will state that it's a test statistic. You skip the critical value because we don't use the critical value. You go ahead and you calculate your test statistic and you find your Z stat by using the formula that we have been using. So you will use that formula to get your Z stat. Now, in order for you to go find the p-value, the p-value is also known as the probability. Right? It is also known as the probability value. What we know from chapter four on the part, not chapter four, chapter six or study unit six on probabilities, you remember the same logic. If your PZ, the probability of a Z value less than a value, we find that probability on, on the table. If it's the probability of Z greater than a value, we subtract the value we find on the table from from one, right? So the same concept you know, the same things that you still remember, you're going to apply here. The Z test statistic is your Z value. Looking at your alternative sign, if your alternative sign says it is less than, therefore you need to say, if my Z state, you keep the two decimals, Regardless of whether it's in the negative or the positive, remember the table has negative or positive, you're going to find the value on the table. So when it is less than, therefore your p-value, your p-value will be equals to the value you find on the table. That is the same, the same, very same concept that we used, right? So that is if it your z your z value it's less than right in your alternative you had that the alternative is less than then the p value will be the value on the table if it is greater than therefore the p value would be 1 minus the table value 
if it is greater than, if your sign says in your alternative says greater than, then your p value will be equals to one minus the table value. E regardless of how much the z stat value is. Your p value will be the value on the table. Now, come the two tail test when it is not equal. When it's not equal, there are two scenarios that you need to take into consideration. When your Z value is positive, let's start with negative. When your Z value is negative, when the answer you get when you calculate your test statistic, if that answer is negative, then the following scenario will happen. Your p value will be equals to two times the value you find on the table. Only if your z value is negative. If your z value is negative, you are going to multiply the table value or the value you're going to find on the table by two, or you're going to add the two, that value you find on the table to, it by, to itself again. If your z value If your Z value is positive, let's make it equals to positive the same way as we made that other one, is equals to positive, then the following will happen. Your P value will be equals to two times one minus the table value. Those are the things we need to remember. It's a mouthful. The hand I said yes uh, on on Monday last week or when we had the session last time to say it's going to take us long to remember all these things. We will need a session on hypothesis on its own. If you can remember all this, then it will be as A, B, C, or X and Y and Z, or as easy as P, Z to answer any questions in the exam. Because this just summarized what you need to know about hypothesis testing. On the summary note that we also shared on the drive, if you go to study unit nine, you will find all this other information that you need to make sure that you know, including also like theory information that they will ask you in the exam that you need to know. Everything that I just explained, remember that, that in your alternative, we only use the population parameter. We only use an equal sign. We don't use the sample parameters. And in your alternative, there is no equal sign and all those things that I just mentioned. What I didn't mention is the type errors. You just need to remember what a type error one is, is to reject the true null hypothesis. And a type two error is to, when we, re, we fail to reject a false null hypothesis and so on. And 
all the, the things are here. All the steps, the six steps that I just went through with you, they are the six steps. You just need to know them. Um, the how to find the critical values. We just went through this. Are those pictures that I just drew just now in terms of how do you state your null hypothesis? Remember, I said you can either use the greater than or equal, or you can just use an equal sign. What is important is the sign you put in your alternative because it tells you whether are you doing a one tail test or a two tail test. And it also guides you in terms of where is your origin of rejection. If it's greater than your origin of rejection will be on the upper tail, which is the left hand side. Um, and uh, this is just giving you an example of how you do the hypothesis testing in terms of the p-value, which is something that I didn't talk about. I just gave you an example of how you make, how you find your p-value. But remember that once you have your p-value, you're going to make a decision based on your p-value and your level of significance, which is your alpha. If your p-value is small, you reject the null hypothesis. If your p-value is less than your level of significance, you reject. If it's greater than or equal, it's exactly, you do not reject the null hypothesis. And that's how you make a decision based on the p-value. And here is an example of how do you find a p-value. If your, if your z is negative and it is a two-tailed test, uh, whether it's a negative or positive, sorry, that's the other thing that I didn't cover on, did I? Oh, I did, I did, I did. If it's negative, it's just the table value times two. If it's positive, then we say two times the table value. And remember, this is only for when it is a two tail. Oh, yes, I did cover that. When it is a two tail, we just take the value we find on the table, we add them together, or we multiply that value by two to get to the PVB, and then you just make a decision. Um, and this is just additional information. So you will just follow through all this oh, document to help you. So if you have this and you use this in your exam, it will make your life easier. Okay. So let's answer the questions. Let's answer the questions based on that information. Unless if there is a question, is there a question? Do you have a question? Not for now, Lizzie, but they will be. <laughs> okay, hey guys, can I get the summary? Okay, they are on the site we, we published. Um, I will share the link again on the chat later on. OK, so let's answer the question. In a sample of 36, the sample mean is 85. It is also known that the population standard deviation is 16. You are required to use this information to test the hypothesis where they gave you that the null hypothesis states that the mean just give me a second. Somebody is not muted. Please make sure that you are muted. Elizabeth, the other Elizabeth, not me. of that. So they gave you the hypothesis. The null hypothesis states that the mean is less than or equals to 80. And the alternative states that the mean is greater than 80. So based on the information that, that we just learned, no, 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 not so long ago. Not so long ago. This information you should be able to identify certain things and be able to tell yourself what is it that you are given in this question. 
So for example, already here, they're telling us the sample. It's that step number two, stating where or what is it that you are given. Sample size, N of 36. The sample mean of 85. The popula what is very important is that weight. Population standard deviation is 16. Therefore, our sigma is known. And when it is known, I'm going to use the Z, the Z test. So those are the things that you need to think about based on the six steps. Remember all those six steps. So if it is known, then I'm using Z test. I'm given all this other information and you are able to stick and state which one. The null hypothesis and alternative, they've stated it. Can I identify which one? Am I doing a one tail or am I doing a two tail? So looking at, you ignore the first top part because that has nothing to do with what we need to state. We look at that top part, which is your alternative. You look at the sign and it says less than, oh, sorry, it says greater than. Therefore, it means I'm doing a one tail test. And it is an upper tail test, right? Because it's on the right hand side. Then in my mind, I need to think, oh, in terms of a decision, if I'm going to make a decision, it means my region of rejection will be on this side because I'm doing a Z. And Z alpha because it's on the one side. So as you can see, I'm already thinking before I start answering the question about those six steps, including all the other additional information that I will require. So it will make my life easier to answer the question and find out which one of these statements is incorrect. Looking at this, I'm assuming I'm gonna be answering all six steps. Let's see. Question A or Option A, it says the test statistic is. So yeah, I'm just going to ask you to calculate what the test statistic is. So we're going to use the formula. Z stat is your sample mean minus the population mean. The population mean is always given in your hypothesis state statement. Divide by the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So you just substitute the values. Your sample mean, we found that was 85 minus the population, 80, divided by the sample standard deviation of 16, divided by the square root of 36. Do the calculation and tell me what the answer is. What is the answer? 7.25. I have two answers. 1.875. 1.875. Also 1. getting 1.875. I also get 1.875. So that is correct. So then it means that number A is correct. So please check how you did calculate. I didn't your, put it in the your, square root, sorry. All right. I saw my way my mistake was. Thank you. That's good. Um, and then number two says we need to find the p value now. If our Z stat is 1.875, to go to the table, we need only two decimals. So we're going to be using Z of, going to be using Z of 1,88 because we need to round it off correctly. 
is going to be z of 8, 8. Now let's go back to the p-value. The p-value says, if it is less than, we're going to go to the table value. If it's greater than, we're going to take to take one minus the table value. If it's two-sided, we look at whether it's negative or positive, and then we do otherwise. So now let's go back to our question. Oh, sorry, I bet. Our question. Our Z is 1.88, but our hypothesis, therefore it means we shouldn't even have used the equal, we should use the greater than. So how do we find the p-value? So if I need to find the p-value of this, because the p-value is the probability. We've been doing this. Find the p-value, we go to the z table. And we go to the positive side of the z table. And we're looking for 1,88. So we're going to find 1,8 and 8 at the top. And where they both meet, that will be the table value. It's not the p value, it's the table value. It's 0, 9699. Go back and you say 1 minus 0, 0,9699. What is the p value? Zero point zero three. The p value would be one minus zero point nine six nine nine eight. Did I also cut, uh, get the right value? Yes, it's nine six nine nine. The p value is zero comma zero. 0, 0,0301. I don't know why they have a 4 there. So the answer here is 0, 0,0301. Um, I'm going to put the question mark there because I'm going to assume that that is correct or not correct, but let's or incorrect because 1 and, and 4 might not be the same thing. Let me just double check the other statement for my sanity. So the next statement states that at a um, at a 5% level of significance, the null hypothesis is rejected. So we can either use the p-value and the level of significance. So the rule says, what does the rule say? The rule says if the p-value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. So let's look at this. What is our p-value? Our p-value is 0, 0,0301. And our alpha, they told us that it is 5%, which means, oh, sorry, I should not put the sign first. Must put my value, 0, 0,05. So looking at the two values, I will say the p-value is less than 0, 0,05. Therefore, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. That is the statement that we should be making. C says at 5% level of significance, the null hypothesis is not rejected. 
And what we just said is we're going to be rejecting it. So based on this, it may see the incorrect statement. And that's how you're going to validate and find the incorrect statement. Number D says at 5% 5 level of significance, the rule is to reject the null hypothesis if the test statistic is greater than or equals to 0, comma, uh, is equals to 1,6455. Now, let's find that out. This is based on the critical value because this is a critical value and the test statistic. So we are basing it on this. It says if our test statistic is greater than or equals to, we do not reject or we reject if it's less than. If it's, if it's greater than, we reject the null hypothesis. So let's test that scenario. So we know we need to find the critical value and we are doing a one tail test. So our Z will be alpha. And if I need to find Z of 0, 0,05, means I must go onto the table. The other thing, I need to go back to the summary to just give you the critical value versions that you need to always remember. So these are the, the values that we always, always use. So if we're going to use only Z alpha, then it means we're not dividing our alpha by two, right? We're using it as it is. If we are dividing it by two, that will give us the value that we are looking for. So now, going back, so you can use on the summary table, you can use the Z alphas that you see on here. So if I'm, I must mention something here because that's what I'm going to be using on the other side. If you think about it in terms of uh, these Z values, so the answer you get here of Z alpha over two will mean something. So in terms of the 80%, uh, which is 0, 0,80, your alpha value. So we should have, you should have a table with your alpha value. Your alpha value here will be 0, 0,20. The alpha value here will be 0, 0,10. On here, it will be 0, 0,05. On here, it will be 0, 0,02. On here, it's 0, 0,01. But you also have your alpha, I'm going to put here, your alpha over two values, which means it's half of these values. So this will be 0, 0,1, which are the alpha values that we used here. The probability values here will be 0, 0,1, 0, 0, 0, 0,05, 0, 0,025, and so on. I'm just making that an example, as an example. Now, looking at our value here that we are looking for, I can go to the Z table and look for this Z, this value on the table. I'm going to make an example on the table and also using the Z table. So I'm going to tell you right now that we're going to use that value because I'm looking at Z of 0, 0,05, which is the same as alpha over 2 of 0, 0,10, right? Which gives me the same answer. So how do I find my Z of 0, 0,05? I will find it by going inside the table, looking for 0, 0,05 inside the table. Now, this is one of those special cases where the difference between the two values will always be equal. So 0, 0,05 will be somewhere between those two values that we always have. And that is one of the only special cases that way we use those two values. 
where we use 1 comma 6 for 5 because the difference here is 5 and the difference on the other side is 5 and we end up having 1 comma 4 1 comma 6 for 5 and that's how I know that this is correct the rule says if the uh, the rule is to reject the null hypothesis if the test statistic is greater than 1 comma 645 because then your region of rejection we did go and validate and find it it is 1 comma 645 if it falls here we reject the null hypothesis and that's how you will know that this statement is correct and that's how you will validate that an upper tail Z test is applicable. We did state that in the beginning there, right there. So I think with this one, with the exception of this difference between four and one, uh, we can assume that the P value was correct at the beginning. Are there any questions? Are you still confused? No questions, no comments. So we move on. Suppose the calculated test statistic for a one-sided tail test is minus 2.66. Suppose further that the population standard deviation is no. What is the p-value for this test? So here they are telling us that they calculated the z-test and they found that that z-test that they calculated is minus 2.66. And there is the other information that they have given us. They say, suppose this is for the lower tail test. So what is the p-value? How do we find the p-value? And go back to the notes and remind ourselves if it's a lower, upper, and two t. How do we find the p-value? And what is the p-value? Nobody knows how to find the p-value. We go to the table. We go to the table. Uh, which side of the table? The negative. The negative side. We go to the negative side and we look for minus 2.6 and at the top, 6. Where they both meet. And the answer is zero comma zero zero three nine. Easy, right? 
if they would have said to take two-sided two-tail test, if they would have said that, how would we find the p-value? What will be our p-value? For our two tail, it would have been two times 0 0.039. And that would have been equals to 0 0.0039 times 2. It would have been 0 0.0078. Just add one and it will be zero comma zero zero seven seven eight. And if it was a one tail upper, it would have been zero comma zero zero three nine. It will not change which one is which. Now, how would I, um, if for example, they would have asked you to make a decision. So for this one, it's a one tail lower. One tail lower. So therefore it means the decision that you would have made would have been if your P value is less than that value, you would reject, right? So. This would have been 0, 0,0039. The rule will remain. If your p-value is less than alpha, you will reject your null hypothesis. That will still stay. But how you find the hypothesis, the, how you find the p-value will differ based on whether it is a two-tail or a one-tail. Ah, sorry, I made a mistake. If it's one tail upper, do you see where my mistake is at? It's on this. I'm supposed to say one minus. It will be one minus 0, 0,0039. The only difference will be how you find the p value. So one minus 0, 0.0039 will be equals to. 0, 0,9961. 0, 0,9961. And that's how you would find the p value in different ways. So for a one tail lower, the value on the table, if it's a one tail upper, you subtract from one. If it's a two tail, you multiply the table value by two. That you need to always remember. Okay, moving on to the next question. Consider a two-tail or a two-sided hypothesis with 10% level of significance, which means your alpha of 0, 0,10, and the degrees of freedom, which then it is your degrees of freedom of 30. If the population standard deviation is unknown, we already know based on the degrees of freedom, it means our population standard deviation will be unknown. What is the critical value for this test? So we are doing a two-sided test. Are we going to use T alpha and the degrees of freedom or are we using T alpha divided by two and the degrees of freedom? Are we using the first one or the second one? We're doing a two tail. Are we using the first one or the second one? Which 
formula we're going to use to find the critical value we dealt with previously in the notes. Yeah. For a one tail, we use. For a two tail, we use. So my question is the same. Since it's a two sided test, therefore it means it was a not equal. Which one are we using? The first one or the second one? You need to be able to identify these things because the minute you use the wrong formula to find the answer, you're not going to get it right. So we're using a two tail, which means we divide alpha by two because there are two sides. When it's one side, we just use alpha. When there are two sides, we divide alpha by two to share the alpha value in the two areas. So you are told your T alpha is 0, 0,10 divided by two, and you are told what your degrees of freedom is in state. So your T of 0, 0,05 and 30, it means you need to go to the with table, Guys, are you sleeping? Or maybe my mic is mute. Since you're not talking to me. Let me see. Oh, you are here. You are here. Oh, okay. It's too hard, Lizzie. <laughs> <laughs> Which table are we using? If I'm going to the T table, right? We're going to the T table. The minute I put T there, it means it needs to also indicate which table I'm using. Remember, for when, oh, let's go back there before we go to the T table. Remember, for when the population standard deviation is unknown and they give you the degrees of freedom, like I, I explained there, you should have these things in front of you and use them to check as I'm saying it or as I'm reading the question and say, oh, DF, degrees of freedom, it means we're doing this. We are on this column. This is how you're going to identify things in the exam. If you are not following me right now and following the things that I'm telling you and using them as your guide, you will find it difficult when you are on your own because you need to, to check your understanding as well. So when I ask you a question, say it so that it makes you not to repeat the same mistake in the future, right? So talk to me. Uh, let me charge my laptop. The battery is almost finished. <clears throat> okay, so we know that we're going to use the T table, right? So we go to the T table. Critical values of T. And we're looking for 0, 0,05 at the top and the degrees of freedom of 30. Zero comma zero five, and where they both meet, that is the value we are looking for, which is one comma six nine. Seven three. One comma six nine seven three. And I can see here they only have two decimal places, so therefore I can estimate it to one comma seven zero. And because it's two sided, remember when it is two sided, we have this area and we have this area. This side is positive and this side is negative. So it will be negative 1,70 and positive 1,70. Hence it is plus or minus 1,70. Because it's a two sided. If it was a one sided, you look at the sign. 
the less than will be on the negative, the greater than will be on the positive. It's not always that, but that's how you can assume the things will be. Happiness, are we good? Are we good or are we great? Yes. We are okay. I think more practice is what we need. Yeah. And we get a very long question. So, various literacy group recommend a reading speed of 152 words minute WPM for grade four learners. A grade four teacher is convinced that the average reading speed for his class is more than the recommended reading speed. In a sample of 36 grade four learners, the average speeding reading speed is 157 weight per minute with a standard deviation of 22 weight per minute. Okay. Now, based on this information, there are several things that we need to get right or we need to deduce from this. So let's find out if you are able to identify things on this that can help us answer the question because the question is more about you are required to test the teacher's hypothesis that at 5% level of significance, this grade four class reading speed is more than recommended reading speed. Choose the correct statement from the list below. And it looks like all this are more about the decision. So there are certain things that we need to do in order for us to get to those decisions. So the first one, it says we reject the null hypothesis. We cannot reject if we didn't do certain things. If we didn't follow all four steps or five steps until we get to the conclusion, which is the sixth step. So it means we need to do all of them. We reject the null hypothesis and conclude. So it also is step number six. So you cannot get to step number six without doing other steps. We do not reject the null hypothesis. We do not reject the null hypothesis. There is not enough information. All of them are about step number six. And it means we need to do step one up until step five in order to get to step six. So. Let's follow all the steps. I'm going to ask a question. You're going to respond back and we're going to do all this together. Not me, all of us togetherness. So let's start with step number one. Let's state the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Step one, what is my null hypothesis and what is my alternative. Remember, there is no right or wrong answer. I'm going to tell you and I'm going to correct you and we're going to move on. So try based on the information given here. Right. So let's first start by identifying the things before we start with with statement one and statement two to help us, because those are the things that help us jog our memories in terms of what we need to be doing. What is the 152 weight per minute? That is your population mean. Um, I'm going to ask, what does the more than mean? Is it the less than or is it the greater than? It's the greater than. It is the greater than. Um, in a sample, what is 36? 36 is our N. And what does this mean? The average reading speed is, and this is from the sample of 36. Is this the population mean or the sample mean? 
the 157. In a sample of 36, the average reading speed is 157 with a standard deviation of 22. Is this the population or the sample? Sample mean. It is the sample mean. And with a standard deviation of 22, is this the population or the sample? It is very important to recognize these things as early as possible. Is this the population or the sample? Is the standard deviation coming from the population or is it coming from the sample? I think from the sample. It is from the sample because it's from the same sentence. It, there is no breakage in this sentence. It says the sample of 36 has the mean of 157 and the standard deviation of 22. So therefore, this is also a sample standard deviation. If it was not from the sample, they would have put their population standard deviation or they would have mentioned it here at the beginning with the mean because I, by me giving you the first point of saying this is the population mean, therefore the rest of the, you cannot have two population means, right? Okay, so based on this information that we have, plus the level of significance is your alpha. Based on this information, then let's try and map out step number one up until step number six. So I'm going to say the population mean is equals to 152 because what I put in the null hypothesis has nothing to do with whatever the information they have given us here. Right, really, because we're not even going to use that. It always has an equal sign. The most important thing is what will go in your alternative. What is that statement that will go into your alternative? What will that mean be? The information is given in the statement already. You have that. You just need to tell me how do we say it. The population mean is, come on guys, be alive, it's greater than 152 because the null hypothesis and alternative we always use the population parameters, right? So what do we know so far already by doing this? We know that we are doing a one tail, one tail test, right? And it will be an upper, an upper one tail test. So it means there is only one region of rejection. So step number two, Let's state what we are given. We are told what the alpha value is, it's 0, 0,05 because it's 5%. Our N is 36 and our S, because we're not given the population, we're given the standard deviation is 22. What else? We can find also the degrees of freedom. Oh, let's not start there. Let's not go there because I'm not sure what what makes me go to the study? Let's go to step number three. What kind of a test are we going to be doing? Are we doing a Z test or are we doing a T test? Look at your notes now. We covered this at the beginning when we started. If the population standard deviation is known, we use the Z test. If it's unknown, we use a T test. Now, we looked at this. Is the population standard deviation known or unknown? It's known. The population standard deviation is unknown because we are given the sample standard deviation. Therefore, what type of a T test? Oh, I'm already giving you answers. What type of a test are we using? Or are we doing? A T. 
we doing a t test we doing a t test that's step number three step number four we need to find the critical value so we're doing a one tail test so our critical value will be t alpha and the degrees of freedom so our t of 0 0.05 and the degrees of freedom is n minus 1 what is our n n is 36 so it will be 36 minus 1 six minus one then our t will be zero comma zero five and thirty five so it means we go to the t table as we'll find our critical value on the t table where t is zero comma zero five probability and thirty five degrees of freedom and the t critical values of t 0, 0,05 is our table, and 35 is our degrees of freedom, and our critical value is 1,6896. 1,6896. So we have our critical value is 1,68. I forgot now. One comma six eight nine six. That is step number four. Let's go to step number five. We need to calculate the test statistic. Step number five, we calculate the test statistic, which is sample mean minus the population mean divided by the standard error which is which is the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n let's substitute into the formula we know that our sample seven, seven, Minus the population is in the hypothesis statement. Right? Sample standard deviation. Right? And let me. What is your answer? I'm getting one fifty five comma eight four eight one fifty five and fifty five. Yes, 155,848. No, check your answer. Okay. Check that you are doing the right calculation. It's 157 minus 152 divided by 22 divided by square root of 36. Common not 378. One comma three six three. 
I get one comma three six three six. I also get that. One comma three six three six. I'm gonna keep only two decimals. There's no need for me to keep all of them. Um, so I get one comma three six. I'm just gonna keep one comma three six. That is your T test statistic. Now we need to make a decision. So making a decision, it means we need to draw ourselves. So step number six, I'm just going to write it here. Uh, okay, let's find a, another space. I'm going to write it here at the top. Step number six, we make a decision. So we draw. The normal distribution. Because it is a greater than, remember, based on that. Therefore, this is one comma three. So, what is our critical value? We use the critical value. Critical value is one comma six eight, which is one comma six nine. One comma six nine, because I kept two decimal. I'm just going to keep 1,69. That is the critical value, which create the region of rejection. Anything this side, we go going to reject the null hypothesis. So now, let's make that decision. Where does 1,36394? Does it fall in the rejection area? I change my color to purple. So this value, where does it fall? Does it fall here or does it fall in the white area? One comma three six. It falls in the, in the white area. In the white area. In the do not reject area. So therefore, the decision is. We do not reject the null hypothesis. We can conclude that we do not reject the null hypothesis. Based on that information that we have, now we can go and find the correct answer. So the first two statements said we reject, we reject. So they are incorrect, right? So we left with only two statement. Statement number C, or we actually left with three, but I can also take away state, statement number E because we have enough information because we were able to get all the information that we need to get to the conclusion, to step six. So C says, we do not reject the null hypothesis and we conclude that the average Reading speed is more than 152. D says we do not reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the average speed is not significantly different from 152. How do we conclude? Remember, our null hypothesis stated that the Reading speed, the mean of the reading speed or the average reading speed is equals to 152. So it means it's the same. So which one of the two statements would you choose? We will not choose number C because C says it is more than which reads the alternative hypothesis. So based on that information, we can also actually even um, eliminate that. And the only statement would state that the mean difference is not or is not significantly different from 152. Remember, it can also be uh, less than 152. 
as well. So D is the only way you will conclude. If you're not rejecting the null hypothesis, then it means you're stating that the null hypothesis, which says that they are not different, they are the same, it's what you are keeping. If you are rejecting it, therefore it means you are validating that the alternative hypothesis is correct. And that is the statement that you will be you will be saying it's significantly uh, different. Okay. <clears throat> and that's how you answer questions on hypothesis. You can see that it is very important to know all this information. Because if in the exam they only ask you about you making a decision, it means you need to know how to find step number one up until step number five to make that decision. Sometimes it also have to mean that you need to also include the p-value in how you make that decision as well. So you need to know the steps. <clears throat> you need to know how to identify whether population standard deviation is given or not, whether you are given the sample and whether you're doing the, the hypothesis testing for the proportion. And this also goes to what we did the last time in terms of the confidence interval, because there are three scenarios that these things can happen. Okay, so let's look at most second last question, and then we will be done with today's session. <clears throat> in a sample of 200, the sample proportion is 0, 0.36. Consider the following hypothesis. The null hypothesis states that the population proportion is 0, 0.4, and the alternative states that the population proportion is less than 0, 0.4. What is the p-value? And they just hit it right there. What is the p-value. In order for you to find the p-value, it means you need to find the z-value first. But before we do that, we also need to identify several things on this question to help us. Because to find the p-value, we need to apply certain scenarios. So what type of a test are we doing based on the alternative hypothesis? Are we doing a two tail or a one tail? And I can hear my voice also like finishing, depleting. By the time it will be five o'clock, my voice won't be there anymore because I'm the only one speaking in this session. I can't rest my voice. So are we doing a one tail or a two tail? Help me rest my voice. I think it should be a one tail. We're doing a one tail test. And since we're doing a one tail test, it will also help us because for a one tail test, it helps us to understand how we're going to find the p value. Let's go back so that. We are aware of that. We're doing a one tail test and it's a lower tail test. So the value we find on the table will be the value we are using. And you remember that we only use or rely on the Z test. And since we're doing for the proportion, we're going to use the Z test statistic, right? So those are the things that we need to be aware of. So going back. We are given the sample size of N. We are given the sample proportion. So here we don't even have to calculate the sample proportion. If they didn't give us the sample proportion, we would have used X over N to calculate the sample proportion. So they have given it to us. We don't even have to calculate it. The population proportion is always stated in the hypothesis testing. Z step will be less than, and since we're looking for the p-value, I can put it in the bracket and say the sample proportion minus the population proportion divided by 
the square root, which is the population proportion, one minus population proportion, divide by n. That of less than because I'm following what the sign is saying. What is my sample proportion? It's 0, 36 minus my population proportion, which is in the hypothesis, 0, 0,4. Divide by the square root of 0, 0,4 times 1 minus 0, 0,4 divide by n of 200. What is my exact value? <clears throat> oh, excuse me a little bit more. I just want to understand uh Sometimes there's a formula that they use uh, the denominator instead of the numerator. So when is it happening? Because now I can see there's a P minus uh, uh, pi divided by the, by the square root of pi. I mean, uh, uh, divided by the numerator. Two just like find me when do you use uh, the denominator? It's like it's equal to the. Uh, <clears throat> Yo, I don't know which formula you are referring to. <clears throat> I mean, about the same formula that you are using currently. Uh, tell me, what is the formula? I don't know which one calculating the, 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 the proportion. Something to say to me. The proportion. Uh, population, okay. Proportion, so, uh, okay, so previously in some of the exercises or from the assignments or some way, um, they might ask you to find the standard error, but they gave you the sample proportion. So you just use the sample proportion instead of the population proportion. But for the real sampling distribution Z score formula to calculate uh, the test statistic, we always use the same formula, which is your sample proportion minus your population proportion divide by the standard error and your standard error in this instance, since you have the population proportion, will always be the population proportion, one minus the population proportion, divide by N. And that is the formula that you will have to use and that is the formula that we use in STA. If you check other books, they might have used a different value. For example, if you, if you used um, books that are used by STA 1501, then they use a different formula in terms of the proportion. For them, they have the sample proportion as a copy and the population proportion as a, a normal P. So you just need to make sure that you understand which one they are using. And especially also when you go to the internet, or you do you look at, at other people's YouTube to try and understand some of the concept. In your module, this is what we use. So this formula basically is for simple proportion. Yes. Proportion. Yes. Okay. So have you found the answer? What is your p value? Your your sorry your z value. My Z value is minus 1.15. Minus 1.15. Do you also get the same? Yes, I've got the same. Okay. What is the next step? We need to go to the Z table to go find the P value. So we go to the negative side and look for 
1.15. We go to the top and look for five. And the p value will be 0, 0,1251. Zero comma one two five one. Uh, remember, I'm not sure if you still have access to your my Unisa assignments. So all these are the questions that comes from your assignment questions. Uh, and remember, this is one version. So every one of you have different questions that they would have received uh, in terms of question 12. So go and do practice activities based on your previous assignments as well. Um, you might have found that some of you have 120 there as the sample size. The proportion might be 0, 0,26 or 89 or something like that. Just go and see if you are able to do this exercises on your own based on your assignment question that you had at that point. So these are for all the revisions that we have been doing so far up until now have been based on your assignment that you did, but one version of that assignment because every second student or third student would have received different questioning or different uh, data like the numbers might have been different to the one that we are using right now. So use those assignments to practice. OK, so going to the last, 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 last question until we are done with the session and we are done with hypothesis testing. And I hope by the end of this session, at least there is some light. In terms of how you answer questions related to hypothesis testing. So the last question. Most of the school reported the decline in the number of absences following the education department's learner transport program and school nutrition program. In a sample of 200 schools from Umzinyati district municipality, 72% reported the decline in the number of learners absent. The district manager is adamant that the true population proportion of the schools that reported a decline in the number of absences dif different or in the number of absences is different from 78%. Formulate the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis and conduct a, the hypothesis test for the true population proportion at a 5% level of significance. We need to find which one of the following statement is incorrect? That's what we need to find, the incorrect statement. So there are different things that we need to record. 200 is our sample size. 72 is our population proportion. 78 is your, sorry, it's your 72 is your sample proportion and 72 is your population proportion because that's what they said there. The true population proportion that reported the decline the absence is different from. And the word different means not equal, right? 
different means is not equal. It is different. Okay. So, based on this, we need to find what if the test statistic is correct, the p value is correct, the null hypothesis is rejected, whether the alternative hypothesis is correct or, or incorrect. And we need to make a decision. So then we are back to square one. We back to doing six steps of hypothesis. So let's start. The first step of hypothesis. First step, your null hypothesis and your alternative hypothesis. The population proportion is equal to 0, 0,78. The population proportion is not equal to 0, 0,78 because that's what they told us from that set. We are doing a two tail test. Step number two, we state what we are given. We know what alpha is. Our alpha is 0, 0,05. The rest, I've already highlighted them. The population, the sample proportion is 0, 0,72. So our P, if they didn't give us our P, we would have calculated it, but they gave it to us. So it's 0, 0,72. Step number three. What kind of a test are we doing? We do in proportions, so it is obvious as a test. Step number four. Looking at this, we are going to be using um, a p-value, so there is no need for us to go find the critical value. So I'm just going to go ahead and calculate the z-test. Z, stat, your sample p minus your population proportion divided by the square root of your population proportion, one minus the population proportion divided by the square root of n. Let's substitute into the formula. 0, 0,72 minus 0, 0,78 divided by the square root of 0, 0,78 times 1 minus 0, 0,78 divided by n of 200. the calculations. You just tell me how much. Seven two minus point seven eight divided by the square root fraction point seven eight times one minus point seven eight close bracket going down two hundred and I get minus 2.05, if I end off correctly. Minus 2.05. Okay, that's step number four, step number five. We need to go find the p-value. We're doing a two-tailed test. The p-value, based on the information we had previously, it's two times the table value because my z-test is negative. Let's confirm that. Ooh, if we're doing a two-tailed test, and your z value is negative, you just take the z value is equal to two times the table value. That's what I told you previously. So I'm not lying to you, right? When I when I give you all this. 
So it will be two times. We need to go to the table value and find the table value from the Z value of minus 2.0705. So go to the Z table on the negative side. We're looking for minus 2.05. So it means we're looking for 2.0 here and 05 at the top where they both meet. which is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, we make a decision and conclude. Oh, because we're using the p value. So the rule, the rule says if the p value is less than alpha, we reject. The null hypothesis. So let's conclude. Our p value is 0, 0,0404. Our alpha value is what they gave us, what it was 5%, right? 0, 0,05, 0, 0,04, and 0, 0,05 is less. Therefore, we reject the null hypothesis and state that the number of absences is significantly different from 0, 0,78. Now I can answer my questions. In the exam, you don't have those negative adjuncts. I'm going to show you all the steps and then I can come and answer the questions. Let's see if we can answer and find our incorrect statement. The test statistic is 2,05. We said it is negative 0, 0,25. Let me change my color back to red. So we have our incorrect statement, but let's validate. Our p value is 0, 0,0404. That's correct. The null hypothesis is rejected. Yes, we are rejecting the null hypothesis. It's correct. We can conclude that the proportion of school that reported the decline in the number of absences is significantly different from the number of absences is significantly different from zero. Therefore, that statement is correct. The alternative hypothesis is that the proportion is not equals to 78. The alternative of that is. Correct. So it means I've used that, that, and that. As you can see that you have used all six steps of hypothesis testing to answer this question. And that's why it is very, very important to know all your steps of hypothesis. And that, on that note, it is three minutes to five. It concludes our session for today. And that's how we will conclude the session. Are there any questions, any comments, any query, any anything you want to ask content related before I stop the recording and we can have general discussions?
join the meeting so late, man. Is it possible whereby I can see uh, the full video of the session? At least I can see how did you come to, more especially to that uh, p value whereby it's equals to two times uh, the table. And I didn't understand that. So okay. I just want to get the full uh, video. I can see what's all about it. Okay, no problem. Any other question which is content related, not administrative issues? Are we good? Are we happy with hypothesis testing? I'm going to stop the recording and we're going to have a general discussion now.